This week we're studying who you are and what you have in Christ or your identification with Christ or your new true identity in Him. Galatians 2.20 says, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. So as we study who you are and what you have in Christ, your identification, one time the Lord said to me, never let your struggle become your identity. It's now time for Mark Hankins. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Welcome to the program today. We are just having a wonderful time talking about who you are and what you have in Christ. In other words, finding out your true identity, uh, what God has done for you and what you have, and that's who you are in Christ. And so we're going to talk about that today, and I'm glad to have my wonderful wife, Trina, with me today. Glad to and be here. This is one of our favorite subjects. Oh, it is. Probably since uh, we first started dating I was in college. Just remembering, yeah. 19, what, 70. 75. Uh, five, mm -hmm. 1975. So, been a while. So, <laughs> so we have a brand new quote book, and uh, we are celebrating 50 years of ministry, and a brand new quote book, of quotes from 50 years, and so we've added a bunch to it, and so this is called Feed Your Faith, Quotes That Will Ignite Your Faith. So we're going to be looking at some of the quotes out of the section that is called In Christ who you okay. are in Christ, in Him. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at several of those quotes and study it, and that'll be our offer today. And so we want to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, which yes. is our favorite classic in Christ scripture. And so 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that he is a new creature, that old things are passed away. And it says, Behold, everything has become new. In other words, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, the Bible says you become a new creation or a new creature or literally a new kind of human that never existed before. The word new means new in kind, new in quality means unheard of before. So you're a new kind of human that never existed before because of what God has done for you in Christ, who you are and what you have in Christ. And he says, and old things pass away and everything becomes new. I love that. And I like it how you said old things pass away. Yeah. Things that have passed away, you don't dig them up again. You mark the spot and you say, here lies whatever. <laughs> yeah. The old person you used to be, the struggle, yeah. that is dead with Christ as much as Jesus died. Mm -hmm. It's a historical event. It's a biblical event. It's an event that happened in the spirit. I'm telling you, heaven knows. Jesus died, but thank God he's no longer dead. He's alive. Yes. And the, it just follows through. We died with him. Yeah. And now we've been raised with him. So really, and we do. I think that's like one of the number one terminologies the Apostle Paul uses is he uses the two words in Christ, in him, mm -hmm. in whom. Yeah. And so uh, Kenneth e. Hagen or Dad Hagen, we call him, when I was a teenager, 17, he said, you need to go through all the scriptures uh, Paul's letters, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, go through Paul's letters and every time you see the two words in Christ, in him or in whom, circle, underline those two words because that's describing something you are mm -hmm. and something you have. In other words, not something you're trying to be, not something you're someday going to be, but right now because Jesus is your Lord, you are now in Christ. And so Kenneth E. Hagen or Dad Hagen would say something like this, you just look a lot better in Christ than you do outside of him. Ah. So when you make Jesus your Lord, you are a new creature, a new creation. So you need to quit seeing yourself the way you used to be and see yourself in Christ, in him. And we know that Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. Mm -hmm. So you are now joined to Christ 
you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. Actually, one writer said that you have been in Christed. In Christed. Amen. So there's 130 in Christ scriptures. So we came up with some phenomenal in Christ scriptures, something that you are, something you have. In other words, you're not the same person you used to be. You have a new identity. Mm -hmm. So you see yourself and know who you are in Christ. I like to say you're such a new creature in Christ. You will have to let God introduce you to your new, new self. self. <laughs> so this book you have, it has a section yeah, on in Christ. In, in Christ. So yes. some of, and it's quotes. I just love this. I like how you do it, Mark. You just open it up and you just start quoting what you said. <laughs> All right. Here's some of the quotes from, from the so good. Uh, Feed Your Faith quote book on who you are in Christ. Uh, first one is, if you're not impressed with who you are in Christ, you have not seen him lately. You look a lot better in Christ than you do outside of him. In other words, sometimes people say, yes, I'm a new creature in Christ, but they think, well, you know, I'm still a struggling, uh, uh, trying to do better, forgiven sinner. But really, you're in Christ. So if you, the definition definition of who you are, your identity must come from Christ. And so you, if you're not impressed with that, you just don't know who Christ is and what his present day condition is mm -hmm. and what he's done for you. So it's very impressive when you realize that you are now in Christ. Oh my. And that was the first revelation the apostle Paul had. He was Saul and he was on the road to Damascus. Yeah ready to kill the Christians. He yeah. was just breathing out hatred. He was a mess. And uh, but Jesus knocked him off his high horse, Yeah, that bright light, and he knew who did it. Yeah. And he heard the voice of Jesus. Who Saul, are you, Lord? Why are, who, why are you persecuting me? Right there, yeah. Jesus gave Saul a revelation that the body of Christ, the Christians, yeah. were him with Christ United. are one. He's persecuting other believers. He said, you're persecuting me. So, mm -hmm. so Christ and the body of Christ are one. Actually, 1 Corinthians 6, 17 yeah. says, he that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. So your spirit's joined to Christ. So that would mean the same life, same righteousness, same authority, same blessing that's in Christ now is in this believer. So here's the quote, you need to be impressed. In other words, you need a revelation of who Christ is because that's going to give you definition of who you are. So the next one is what happened in Christ is greater than anything that has ever happened to you. Oh. In other words, sometimes uh, people, when they make Jesus their Lord, you know, they say, well, you, you know, the reason I'm this way is because if you knew what happened to me, you'd know why I'm this way. But when you understand what happened on the cross and the death of Christ from the cross, his death, his burial, his resurrection, what happened to Christ and what God did in Christ is really greater, his grace is greater than anything that has ever happened to you. And so you can't let what happened to you have a greater impact on you than what happened in Christ. So you have to take your eyes off of what happened to you. Yeah. Put your eyes on Jesus. Whatever we look at, we become mm -hmm. like. And so we look at Jesus and we say, oh, he and I yeah. am joined. Mm -hmm. We are one and the same. And I love it how you said here in another quote, you said, Christianity doesn't begin with what you do. It begins with something God has done for you mm. in Christ. Okay, amen. So God's already done. He's already done it. Everything he's going to do about your salvation, your healing, your blessing, your victory, he's already done it mm. for you in Christ. And so you just have to receive it. Amen. Receive it. Believe so it. here's another good quote. This is one of my favorites. It says, God's work in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by Adam's fall. Mm. All right, think about it. Read that one more time. God's work in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by Adam's fall. Actually, that is a quote, Romans 5.20 from Laubach translation. God's work in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by Adam's fall. In other words, no matter what sin has done or sickness has done or depression has done, what God did in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by Adam's fall. He paid the dip, the price, the full price. He did more than enough. Um, the damage was pretty bad, wasn't it? 
the damage affected the whole human race, every nation, every, every, peop every people, every language. And so what God did in Christ far exceeds that. Went more than Where sin more. abounded, grace, grace did much more yeah. abound. So that's Laubach's translation. Like Next that. one is, God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every person, in yeah. every man. God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every man. In other words, uh, what Jesus did, he did for every person on the cross and his death and his resurrection. So God really included that in uh, for every person. So he did in Christ. We see what happened on the cross, the death, the burial, and the uh, resurrection, the triumph, the ascension of all that Jesus has done and his seating at the right hand of God. God did in Christ, so the scripture says he made us alive together, raised us up together, and made us sit down together in heavenly places. So that's not just a theological, you know, statement, mm -hmm. but it's very practical because you put that up against your situation. Yeah. You know, what what am I walking through, this yeah. depression, what, confusion, whatever it is, my past, and you say, oh, God did more than enough mm -hmm. to take care of anything. His like grace far exceeds. Yeah. All right. So let's look at another one here. God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every person. <laughs> wow. So this next one is our identification with Christ demands an identical confession of faith. What's that mean? All right. Our identification with Christ demands an identical confession of faith. The word confession means to agree with or say the same thing. So if you want your faith to function, then you have to see your identification with Christ. I like to say it this way, never let your struggle become your identity. Mm -hmm. ah. In other words, sometimes people have certain struggles and they almost see themselves that way. That kind of becomes, this is the way I am. So, so they'll actually say, I am and I have, and I am. But if you're going to live by faith, you're going to have to let your confession of faith agree with God's word mm -hmm. instead of uh, you uh, agreeing with your past and your former uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. You got to say, this is who I am. This is what I have. Actually, I like to say this, the great I am made me who I am. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so instead good. of saying, I'm trying to be someday going to be, you say, I am a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Everything is new. And that really happened in the spirit of the believer, which is the real you. So your confession of faith needs to agree with God's identification for you because you're not the same person you used to be. You're a new creature, a new creation. And the apostle Paul says, put on the new man who is created in righteousness and true holiness. In other words, put on the new man. How do you do that? And so you put on the new man really with your, with the word, meditating on the word, and then your agreement, your confession of faith. So as you're doing that, you're meditating on the word of God. That word is engrafted into you and you take on mm. the personality of God, the personality of Jesus Christ. It's, it's impossible mm. naturally, but as you meditate on this mm -hmm. supernatural truth, it becomes part of you. And it sets you free. How about really this one right here? Changes you. I got another one. You got another one? I got a bunch of them. You got a bunch. It says, God put into Christ everything he wanted there you to you have. <laughs> All right, look. God did in Christ what he wanted to do there, man. Then you say it this way. God put into Christ everything he wanted you to have. In other words, Jesus as the last Adam became actually the uh, pattern are the archetype of a new kind of humanity. So more than just a forgiven sinner, God's plan was actually to put into every believer, every Christian, actually the word, the, the word Christian means a Christ person. <laughs> <laughs> so one translates says Christ, like Christ person. And so they were first called Christians at right. Antioch because they called them, they were Christ persons. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're a person that now the life of Christ, the anointing of the anointed one and the same life that's in Christ. So God put in Christ what he wanted to put in the new man or in the last Adam and a new creation. Woo, praise the Lord. So it's, we're not just trying to fix ourselves up a little bit. Yeah. When we come to God, yeah. we, Jesus, yeah. we're reborn. He puts a new heart. A new heart. He puts a new spirit on the inside of you. 
And so you're more than just a body. You're more than just an intellect or a brain. You are a spirit made in the image of God. And so when you make Jesus your Lord, he actually puts a new heart, a new spirit, and other translations, they say put a new nature, right. the divine nature on the inside of right. you. And so you become a new creature in Christ. So Paul uses that terminology uh, in Christ, in him, in whom 130 times, wow. the new man. Yes. And Paul uh, describes himself as, I knew a man in Christ. So perfect, perfect, perfect uh, phrase a man in Christ. So 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2, Paul says, I knew a man in Christ. And then he says, I couldn't tell whether he's in the body, out of the body, such a one ascended to the third heaven. So he's talking about wow. the capacity of this new man in Christ mm -hmm. to realize the power of this new creation, mm -hmm. a new man, a new kind of human. Mm -hmm. That's what they said about Jesus over and over as they said, what kind what of kind man, of man is this? Wow. Well, he is a a man, Jesus is a man walking on the earth, fully a man, but he has the life of God. He's God manifest in the flesh, but he has that life in him. So what kind of a man is this that can, uh, has authority over devils? Uh, he walk on the water, right. he multiplies those and fish. What kind of man is this? And so now in Christ, you become a new kind of human that God's given you the power of the word. Jesus said, works I do, shall you do also greater works in these. So you're a, a, a man in in Christ are a human in Christ, in Christ that joined to Christ right. with the same life that's in Christ. So Jesus is not in a class all by himself because mm -hmm. of the new birth. Yeah. If anyone is in him by believing yeah. in him, by believing in the blood and what he's done for us, you yeah. become one with him. Yeah. You can't help but be mm -hmm. like him. Yeah, the same life is in him. So, so what happens when you make Jesus your Lord? Actually, some actually the Amplified Bible says that you get engrafted into mm -hmm. Christ. So you're not just people think so much that I'm forgiven. That's wonderful, and they just think, well, I'm a you know I once was a, a sinner, but now I'm forgiven. Or they'll say, well, uh, I was once lost on my way to hell. That's wonderful. That now you're not going to hell. That you know your home is in heaven. <laughs> but there's so much more to the new birth than just one day I'm going to go to heaven. Right now, God has done a miracle on the inside of you that is beyond what you can even imagine. Now the, the Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. So you look like a regular human on the outside, but in your spirit is the life of God. Mm -hmm. And yet too many times believers let their flesh, their senses dominate them, their reasoning, their past, their mm -hmm. thoughts, you know, the past, all pictures of the past, right? So oh, yeah. I always oh, say yeah. don't allow your your past to photobomb your future. <laughs> In other words, well, you get a new picture of who you are That's and right. then you don't want your, your past like, ah, I'm still here. No, old things have passed That's away. Great. Everything's become new. And so he says here, um, your identity, right. you have a new identity. Mm -hmm. And so if really an interesting part of the life of Christ is Jesus laid aside his deity powers, the Bible says, and became fully man. So he's a man uh, with the life of God in him. He's God manifest in the flesh, but he did not use deity powers. So if he laid that aside, so in Luke chapter four, it says when Jesus preached his first sermon, it says he opened Isaiah, the book, and he found the place where it was written. So Jesus... He studied, he studied the, the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So Jesus literally found himself in the scriptures and he literally said, all these scriptures are written about me. And so these scriptures, he opened up to Isaiah chapter 61 and he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. And every one of them were shocked because that scripture was talking about the Messiah. And Jesus said, that's me right there in no Isaiah 61. Yeah. So he just sat down and said, this is me. Mm -hmm. Deal with it. So uh, you, you need to find yourself in the word and say, that's who I am instead of finding yourself uh, on some sort of a, a genealogy, 
you know, trying to figure out who your daddy was, your mama was, your past is, you know, come on now and find out mm -hmm. who your grandpa was and figure out if part of you came from Scotland, part of you came from Africa, part of you came from, <laughs> from India, part of you came from South America. No, you came from Jesus Christ. In other words, God put into Christ. And so you're not just, you know, uh, some sort of a Heinz 57 uh, bungle of just whatever, you know. <laughs> you are who God yes. says you are. That's and you right. must accept that and declare that and agree with God. You so Jesus' name. ministry started mm -hmm. in Isaiah 61 when he said, this is me right here and this is who I am. So Jesus literally found himself in the scriptures and said, that's my identity. Mm -hmm. That's who I am. And this is what I have. <laughs> Boy, that drove the devil crazy. In <laughs> other words, if you will dare to do that, man, it'll put the devil on the run and you'll enter a supernatural part of your life you've never had before. And that is your declaration of who you are and what you have in Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise God. When I met you, that's what impressed me about you. Yeah, I liked how you look and all that, but Appreciate you knew <laughs> who he is in Christ. And I said, okay, I'm going to hook up with someone like you. So if you're not impressed yes, with I who am. you are in Christ, you just don't know who Christ is. So that's your new identity, what you have in Christ. So I encourage you to get the quote book called Feed Your Faith, um, full of quotes. And we've only covered like five of them, I think. So quotes that will ignite your faith on who you are and what you have in Christ. So you can get that, just call our office or just get online and say, I want that quote book. And just one or two of those quotes will ignite your face, set you on fire, <laughs> and you'll get some new thoughts Amen. and say some new things. Go Praise the Lord. New places. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God's got new things for you. So remember not the former things. God said, I'm doing a brand new thing. And that comes from Jesus Christ. And you know who you are in him. And uh, we're going to continue studying this in the next program. So get the book, uh, feed your faith, full of quotes. Man, that's just a bunch. It'll light you up. Praise the Lord. So until next time, may God richly bless you. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Jesus did not go through the agony of death, burial, and resurrection to help us just a little bit. Everything changed from the cross to the throne in those three days. God wants you to understand who you are and what you have now in Christ. Learn your true identity with the book, Taking Your Place in Christ. Many Christians talk about what they're trying to be what they need to be, and what they wish to be. But there is no need to struggle to find your identity and God's purpose for your life. You put on the new man by declaring who you are in Christ. You have a supernatural identity in Christ, and you must have a change of identity to reach your divine destiny. God will show you who you are in Christ with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It doesn't matter what you may be going through, Failure is not an option. In Pastor Mark's brand new book, Feed Your Faith, you will find that it is full of quotes that will feed your faith on these topics. Faith, confession, in Christ, righteousness, the Holy Spirit, the love and joy of God, and much more. You will learn to walk in victory every day. Here at Mark Hankins Ministries, we are called to train and equip believers worldwide. This is why our vision is to translate our books into more than 100 languages. Your gift of any amount will help us translate books into many languages and complete our new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. Visit MarkHankins.org or call 318-767-2001 and join us in partnership to carry the message of faith around the world. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can. Together we will. 
Thank you so much for tuning in to the program today. We trust that you were blessed and encouraged and inspired by the word that was taught to you. I also want to take a moment to thank all of you that have partnered with Mark Hankins Ministries. Because of you, the Word of God is being preached all around the world. Because of you, books are being translated into multiple different languages. And because of you, the MHM Conference Center is being built right now. Thank you so much for being a part. Also, I want to tell you about this week's offer. It is my dad's new book, Feed Your Faith. It's a book of faith quotes. It's super good. I want to read one to you right now, one of my favorites. It says, Jesus did not die and go through the suffering of the cross and being raised from the dead to help us a little bit. What Jesus did in the death, burial, and resurrection radically changes everything. This book is full of some powerful, powerful quotes on faith. I would love for you to get it. You can go to markhankins.org or you can call the number on the screen. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a great day. For over five decades, our desire has been to teach foundational biblical truths to believers around the world. Now, like never before, we see an acceleration of that assignment and are determined to take the message of faith to as many nations possible seeing lives, churches, and nations transformed by the Word of God. We've been to over 50 countries and have ministered the Word and the Holy Spirit in conferences, churches, and Bible schools. Some of these places we go to again and again, and the seed of the Word is still growing today. Our assignment is to distribute the Word on every avenue possible, broadcasting on TV, websites, social media, the app, and through publishing our books and CDs. We know if we do our part, God will do His part and make sure the Word lands at the right place at the right time. In the last days, the printed page will be the most effective distribution of the Gospel. The stories of people receiving our books in remote places around the world fuels our vision to do what the Lord has called us to do. People are receiving our books deep in the heart of Africa, Vietnam, Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, Iran, and Pakistan, and so many other places. Our books are currently translated in many languages and distributed in even more countries. Our vision is to have our books translated into a hundred different languages. Getting the written word in the hands of pastors and believers around the world is paramount to igniting the faith of generations to come. The books can go much further than we can. Partners, we ask you to continue to stand and believe with us that the Lord will continue to open the doors to new countries for our books to be distributed. Not only have we seen the faithfulness of God in the distribution of the books, but the television and media ministry has also accelerated as we recently launched out into daily television. We are now on the Victory Channel, VTN, and the Word Network, and are reaching a potential of 150 million homes worldwide. We desire to continue distributing the Word more efficiently. One way we are doing this is through building our brand new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us minister the Word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. We're also streaming our In Christ International Bible College around the world via Facebook and YouTube. This allows anyone in any country to catch the spirit of faith and study the Word at their convenience. With the advances of modern technology, the supernatural acceleration, and the new open doors, we are reaching more people today than ever before. And that's because of you. It's because of our partners that we're able to accomplish the assignment God has for us. When everyone pulls together, we will see amazing things happen for the kingdom of God. We thank you for your continued partnership. We could not do what we're doing without our partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org.